involved in in set up and serving and so it's great that we just have a few minutes together and uh jesse's like are you doing anything this morning and i was like i don't think so uh but then i just thought well what could we talk about and here's something that probably is worth talking about the message today is going to be on the word stand fast and of course yet last week was on these heavenly realities that ought to strengthen the believer and in light of those things, that you're called, that you're sanctified, that Jesus takes the journey with you, that you've chosen for the salvation of the world, you know, that foundation, that you've been glorified, you're glorified because you are a partaker of the glory of Christ, that he shares the glory with you. In light of all of that, he says to stand fast. And so I just wanted to like, and then he says, stand fast and, and hold on, right? So it's powerful language. And so somewhere in the message, I don't have a chance to, to like interact as much. But the question is, where do we all need to be standing fast today? Right. And so if I had the time, we could all probably. Why don't we just say, is there any place where anybody can say you feel like you need to one, two words where you need to stand fast today right now? Sorry. The word. Stand fast and being in the scriptures. OK, good. Anybody else? multitude what's the first thing that comes to your mind when it comes to what is the opposition against your spiritual life i need to stand fast coming up next week in the lord because i'm going on a relatively aggressive life okay and i need to be focusing on the lord every step okay so there's physical endurance combined with the fact that actually you're trying to make this a redemptive experience more than just a guy hiking you're trying to create this into you know make a spiritual experience out of that and that's going to take a certain amount of perseverance and right okay that's a good awareness. example awareness that's actually one of the lists of like six things i say that we need to in order to stand fast is to be spiritually aware very good there's so many times there's an opportunity there was probably an opportunity that i could have witnessed to somebody my brain wasn't there. Right. So I need to be focused. Right, right. Vigilant. I like, I like a spiritual sentinel, right? Anybody else? Stand what? fast in the defense of the gospel. Okay, very good. You're going straight Pauline letters right there in the New Testament. <laughs> yeah, stand fast in the defense of the gospel. Good. Stand fast against people who want to be nasty and mean. Okay, so there's I'm some sorry I went to work. there's some of those out there. I feel better now, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as much as we need to stand fast against those who are nasty and mean, no. there are also we need to stand fast against those who are being nasty and mean and might not even know it. Right? As there's times when people are and they don't even realize sometimes how deconstructing their behavior may be or their actions may be and I'm one of them and you may be one of them too so the one place I want to talk about with you and we're going to and then we'll and then we'll, we'll pray is the area of gossip right and here's why gossip is on my mind this morning and that's well, this won't be a part of the Sunday message but just for us as a leadership team is that as we continue to grow and as we continue to establish more organization there's some really beautiful things that come with that you know there's a lot of questions are answered that were unanswered who do i report to where should i be what time do i show up what's the necessary products that i need for my ministry and like all oh, as you get organized those things get answered However, as they get answered, certain people may not like those answers. Who's doing that? I thought I get that product. I always make the coffee. And now you're telling me he's getting sent to the coffee company to get the coffee. Like, I, like, and next thing you know, in the process of trying to establish ministry and organization and leadership and, 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 and well-executed management, people can get hurt in the process. And what I'm saying is we have to be very careful as leaders how we handle people that are hurt in the process because they need to be shepherded and they need to be ministered to just as much as everyone else. Uh, it would be great, you know, you know who I love to minister to? People that want to be ministered to, right? Because they're the easiest ones because they want to, but to minister to someone who's not necessarily wanting to be ministered to, that's kind of harder. But 
they're nonetheless in need. And like it doesn't say that Jesus leaves the 99 to go after the one that wants him to pursue him. Like sometimes Jesus is pursuing one of those lambs that doesn't even know that it's lost or doesn't even care that he's coming. And yet Jesus is still moving towards them, right? Romans 5 says here in his love, even while we were yet sinners, Christ is dying for us, right? So like, and here's love is that even though we don't know that we're lost and rebellious, even though we're in Christ, that we're backbiting and that we're gossiping and that we're subtly undermining the work of, of Christ, He's still coming with to us with spirit-filled, life-giving correction. And so I just want to, we, we all ought to be in a receptive state of, uh, of being able to receive that correction when it comes. I don't have any correction to give to anyone today. I just, as a leader, um, part of my responsibility is to be able to look at what everyone else, this is what a leader is. If you wonder if you're a leader in this room, a leader is someone who looks at what everyone else looks at and sees what everyone else can't see, right? So when you walk in and you're a leader of hospitality, you I walk in and I go, hey, Bobby, Mike, hey, Mary, and you're looking at that table and how many tables are out there and what's in what section. Like, I'm not looking at that. You know why? Because I'm not a leader of that. But when you're a leader of it, you see that table a whole different way. Just like you'll probably be looking at cars right now in a whole different way when you once you bought a car. You know, there's this, this ridiculous ocular nerve that makes you see the thing in which you're interested. So I'm often looking at leaders and how we're managing. The landscapers look at trees and bushes, right? Carpenters look at structural engineering of a house. Rick sees awnings right away. We get funny stories about driving, and he can give an estimate on a house that fast because he's been in the business, right? Because his eye can see that and make that decision. Because these are the areas in which we lead. So I'm just saying, when it comes to people, let's be extra aware of how we're leading them and make sure that we are, squelching's a funny word, I don't use it too often, but it's just the word that I can think of. You know what squelch is? Like when, when you have a walkie-talkie, you have a two-way radio, you have a knob called a squelch knob on there. Do you remember that? I don't know if it's still on there, but it used to say squelch. And there's a static that comes out of your walkie-talkie, and you dial this thing back until that static goes away. And we need to spiritually start squelching any gossip or any undermining. When someone's disappointed about a decision that's made, you got to redirect them to their leader to talk about what their disappointment is and see if we can manage it instead of absorbing that. And then you get fried, and now you're sharing your frustration, and Satan is just strategizing I'm saying let's try to be careful to avoid that. Does that make sense? Jesse? I just thought of um, not just avoiding gossip, but pursuing encouragement. Because if there's an encouraging culture, gossip's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Right. Because it's going to be so opposite of what we're used to. So if we work not just on trying to stop, but trying to start encouraging, I think that's a good way to redirect that energy. You are such a minister. Okay, so that's the great way to finish is that when you create the culture, right, of encouragement, the gossip will naturally take care of itself. It's like, I don't know how many of you work in an environment where there's no cursing, but like I used to work on construction. I worked doing street work and man, the language would just fly and I didn't think twice about it. Getting saved and moving into like more redemptive environments for employment, like if somebody curses, it's like a brick in the head. You're like, whoa, dude, that's not that's not how we talk here, right? And so, it, like Jesse said, those things will stick out. So if we're just loving each other, when someone comes with that subversive language, it's just like, it'll really feel like this just doesn't fit, right? And how we handle that as a leader is maybe another lesson as well, but just let's be on guard, all right? Anybody else before we wrap up?